Hola, this is Enrique Morones of Gente Unida with Sarah Bella, producer of Magnificent Mujer and Buen Hombre. And as your host of Magnificent Mujer and Buen Hombre, we are so happy that the elections are over, we've accomplished our mission, and we're so happy that there's such a smooth transition going on. Um, just kidding on that last part. But I'm not kidding about this. We have started now to talk about some of the previous episodes we had on Buen Hombre Magnificent Mujer, and we have a really special Magnificent Mujer on today. Somebody that just wrote a book, a children's book, about Chicano Park. She's an accomplished author, mentor, dancer, a lover of the earth, of the environment, of, of uh, promoting social justice. And I'm speaking, of course, of Bee Samora. B, thank you very much for all the work that you have done and continue to do. And we're delighted that you have this bilingual book about Chicano Park for children. So children can learn more about what a tremendous asset Chicano Park is for all of us. Porque es muy importante saber la realidad del Parque Chicano. So B Samora, Magnificent Mujer, welcome back to magnificentmujer.org. And we're gonna now play your previous interview about who you are, and we want to encourage people to please buy this book, which is about Chicano Park. Muchas gracias, amor, si se puede. All year, all year we want to celebrate the 50th anniversary, and that's why we've had so many special guests, and we're going to continue to have guests throughout the year, and many of these guests will be coming back throughout the year to give a more ex extensive uh, history of their work. And the people that we've been uh, highlighting since we started Bueno Hombre Magnificent Mujer are people that you should get to know. Many are well known. Some are people that are uh, just icons in the community. And it's very important that we recognize their work, their history, especially for our youth. And some of these icons have gone to the next life and we want to remember their stories. And that's why it's so important to document everything that we're doing. And that's why with when Omid and Magnificent Mujer were paying this very special tribute to Chicano Park. And don't forget that the Chicano Park Steering Committee is doing a virtual uh, event throughout the week. So make sure you, you tap into that. So today we have a Magnificent Mujer, and boy is she a Magnificent Mujer, and her name is Beatriz Mora. Beatriz, como estas? How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. Nice to see and hear everybody today. Well, we, we, we're delighted that you can join us. And the way that I usually start when I used to have a radio show and now with these podcasts, the, the talks that we have is by having the person self-identify. So Beatriz, uh, when somebody says, or somebody comes up to you and says, who is Beatriz Mora? What do you tell them? What's, what's a little bit about your history? You know, where, you, where, you know, where you're from and, and so forth. Okay. Well, let me just clarify. So my name is Beatriz Samora Aguilar. And, oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, and, Mora. Okay. And uh, I was born in San Diego. Actually, I recently found out that I was born in Logan Heights, um, which mm -hmm. I'm very proud of. Uh, but I was raised in Los Angeles. Uh, my family heritage on my mom's side, they, uh, my grandmother and my grandfather came to the United States during um, the Mexican Revolution. Uh, my grandmother came as a mail order bride uh, to a little mining town in Arizona uh, called uh, Jerome Cottonwood area of Northern Arizona. And on my dad's side, my family roots are New, Me New Mexico. So we're more from the Tularosa, uh, White Sands area of New Mexico. And as far back as I can um, look into my lineage, we've always been in these lands. So that's my um, cultural heritage. I'm Chicana and um, raised for most of my life in the Eastern part of Los Angeles. Came back to San Diego as a young woman and um, made my life and home here. So that's wow. a little bit about who I am, uh, where I come from. Um, while living here in San Diego, I um, was married and raised a family and um, was an educator for many years and have always been a, I consider myself to be a cultural warrior. And I uh, work 
with the community to help um, Chicano community really understand more about their roots, more about their heritage and their place in this world, which is uh, represents a long history and chain of contributions, not only to this country, but to the Americas. Wonderful. So Beatriz Zamora Aguilar, uh, a real icon and a real, uh, you know, with, with that background, now I understand some of where that power comes from in the work that you're doing. And some of the, the well-known work that you do is, of course, the dancing, the Aztec dancing. And I've seen the, the, the group and, and the wonderful dancing and, and uh, the history that that portrays. How did you get involved in, in Aztec dancing? Well, the interesting thing is when I was um, when I was a little girl, I, I always heard from my parents that I was Mexican. Um, we didn't say Mexicano. I was raised, like I said, in Los Angeles and my parents were bilingual. So they mainly spoke English to us, although they were uh, very fluent in Spanish. And so we we knew that our identity was Mexican. We ate, you know, Mexican food and we practiced Mexican traditions. Um, but I didn't know much else about my life other than, you know, good tamales at Christmas and, um, you know, that, it, that family was important. And, but one thing that my dad always did is he always gave us nicknames. And one of the nicknames that I had, one of many, uh, was I was the Apache. And I didn't know why I was the Apache, except that um, I had really dark eyes. And he always said that my black eyes were, were because of my Apache heritage. And that's all I knew. But growing up, I always wanted to know more about that. And I liked being called Apache. Um, and so when I was in college, I was attending Cal State Fullerton. Um, one day we're having a, a Chicano culture day. And I'm in the booth making tacos. <laughs> and I see these danzantes come in and walk across the lawn, uh, the lawn. I had never, ever seen Native American dance prior to that, and let alone Mexican Native Indigenous dance. And so I immediately uh, left my post and just kind of ran over to where they were dancing. And I watched them dance. And as I watched them dance, I uh, began to get those, you know, those chills that you get up the spine of your back where everything is just lighting up in your body. And I started crying. I, don't, I didn't know why. I don't know why I was so emotionally moved and touched by the energy, but I just was very moved. So that was the end of that day. Um, a couple years later, I finished college in, um, in Fullerton. And I decided to pursue a master's degree. And I came to San Diego to pursue the master's and to reconnect with the place that I was born. And um, one of the first uh, persons I met was my future husband-to-be, Mario Aguilar. And uh, he invited me to go and see them dance. And so I, I didn't know. I thought I was going to see Ballet Folklorico, which I also liked. Um, and I get there and I see that it's the same dance that I had seen before. And I found out that he had actually been one of those danzantes dancing at Cal State Fullerton the day that I had been wow. emotionally moved. So yeah, that's uh -huh. kind of my introduction and that's kind of what brought me to the danza. Um, I realized that there was some kind of uh, cosmic energy pulling me to this place. That's quite a story. So you had that uh, earth changing or life changing moment when you were behind the booth selling tacos and then you see Mario and company out there dancing and it just uh, something happened within you and you're saying, I've got to be part of that on all levels, not only becoming a dancer, but meeting Mario. And uh, that, that is a very, very uh, powerful story. And in, in your upbringing, where you have the bilingual and, and, and proud of your roots and so forth, um, I can really relate to that, except in my history, it wasn't bilingual, it was always Spanish. We always spoke Spanish at home. And uh, so Spanish was always our first language and is. And I learned to speak English actually when I went out into the streets 
because the neighbors in Golden Hill, where I grew up, most of the neighbors there all spoke English. So that's that's kind of how I learned how to speak English. But this uh, danzante moment when you were at Fullerton, and then you come down to San Diego. What were you, what was your undergraduate and graduate degrees in? What were you studying? Well, at Cal State Fullerton, I uh, majored in both sociology and ethnic studies, which was primarily Chicano studies. Um, and then I, I didn't know what I was going to do the next step. I knew I didn't want to be an elementary school teacher because uh, I had uh, taken an internship. All students should take an internship before they <laughs> complete college to help them reconfirm their goals. And I had taken an internship in a third grade classroom and I realized that was not for me. Um, and then I had a professor who, um, I think he was an Irish man, had bright orange hair. And he, uh, towards huh. the end of my study, he said, you know, you really ought to consider uh, going for the master's degree. And at that time I thought, you know, this is crazy. I never thought that I had what it took to complete a bachelor's degree. I figured somebody was going to you know, figure it out eventually that I didn't have the intelligence um, to complete the bachelor's degree. I think we call that uh, the imposter syndrome. And a lot of Chicanos face that because we didn't grow up believing that we were capable. Um, and so, when he suggested that, I thought, wow, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and see what's out there. So I applied to two master's programs in counseling um, and I got accepted to both. And I decided to come back to San Diego to explore my cultural roots and my cultural homeland. So that, those were my, um, that's my um, formal educational training. And then of course, I've had training in danza. I've been dancing now for about 40 years and uh, going to Mexico and learning from the traditional groups in Mexico that have hundreds and hundreds of years of history, um, as well as bringing many dance teachers over the years, maestros to the United States to not only teach us, but to teach others. That's wonderful. And one of the uh, ironies of your story is a lot of the people that, that I've interviewed through the years when I used to have a radio shows or other podcasts, Oftentimes, the story is the opposite. While they're in school, they're told, that's it. Why are, you even, why are you even thinking about going to college? Much less getting a master's. But the people fight on. You know, they, they take that on as a challenge. And then they go on and get, uh, uh, you know, they graduate from college. Sometimes they get a master's. Some of them even become doctors. So it's wonderful that, uh, that you did follow that path and that you met Mario because talking about a teacher, somebody that can teach. One of the things that I've always enjoyed, and I've mentioned it to you guys, is I really love the way that, uh, that when you're doing the dances, they're explained. You know, you talk to the people, you tell them a little bit about the history, what the dance means, and that's very, very powerful. You know, that's, that's something that I think a lot of times people just kind of take it for granted, and they don't realize what is really going on. And do you remember, uh, Beatriz, well, no, I would imagine you remember, your first introduction to Chicano Park, when you first went to Chicano Park, not necessarily the first time you danced, although that might've been the time, but when you first heard or, or went to Chicano Park. Well, I, I remember my first Chicano Park day, which was uh, 1979, spring of 1979. And I was not dancing yet, didn't start dancing until a year later. Uh, and I just went to party and hang out and uh, relish and enjoy my culture. And it was a beautiful experience. Um, as I walked the grounds and I got to learn more about the history of Chicano Park, the history of the strength and perseverance of our people, um, I knew at that moment that I would always be connected to this park. And to me, the park represents sacred land. It's a symbol of a sacred and um, spiritual movement of a community that, you know, grassroots, um, poor overall in terms of economic means, but rich in cultura and in faith. And, um, you know, I know it's just a small little plot of land, but there's some people who, who, who don't see the beauty of that part. But to me, 
it's beautiful that what it represents in terms of the strength and the courage of so many of our antepasados and the people who've been carrying it on for the last uh, 50 years and hopefully a message to our youth that that you know they need to pick up that charge and continue to take care of not only chicano part but what it symbolizes which is you know finding your voice and speaking up for what you know is is right what you know is good for the greater good so that's that's so to me to you what chicano part means to you is sacred like it's it's sacred it's um sacred land because one of the things that we've been asking people is what does chicano park mean to them and they come up with all these different types of uh of uh, meanings and sacred lands it's very very true those are sacred lands and it's uh, wonderful how the chicano park steering committee has steered all of us in the direction of recognizing that and protecting that and being able to pass it on to our our you know, the, the generations that are going to follow. And that's one of the things that we're doing is that we're going to be uh, creating some spaces where we could donate to the Chicano Park Museum and Cultural Center because we've got to remember where we've been, where we are, and where we're going. And uh, those are definitely sacred lands. I, like everybody uh, that's been there, really treasures of those memories of uh, Chicano Park because it is it's definitely sacred lands. Now, how about the, how about the first time you went there uh, with the danzantes and actually danced. Was it a Chicano Park Day celebration or was it another type of an event there? Well, you know, our dance group, Danza Mexicayo, um, is, not, is not the first dance group in San Diego. The first dance group in San Diego taught, uh, was taught by our maestro who came from Mexico, Florencio Yescas, in Paz Descanse. Um, and that group's name was Toltecas in Aslan. And my husband, Mario, was part of that group. I was part of it for only just a few months before we uh, departed. There were some differences that happened as, as, will, as will happen in any movement. And we decided to uh, start our own group in 1980, Danza Mexicaya. So our charge um, for at least 20, maybe 22 years, is we created and carried on the whole danza aspect of Chicano Park. We practiced there on a weekly basis. We practiced at Sherman Heights Community Center. We practiced at uh, the Centro Cultural de la Raza. And uh, we laid down a foundation for teaching these cultural traditions in our communities. So we carried that on for many, many years. And at some point we decided um, for various reasons again to kind of pass that baton on and we continue to teach and now we focus in San Isidro and the South Bay, Chula Vista, San Isidro. Um, and for a while we taught in Imperial Beach. So um, we've been an integral part of the formation of the Danza at Chicano Park. We continue to provide a ceremony there every year. We work with the other groups in San Diego. And, um, you know, Chicano Park is just a special place to lay those prayers down, to lay that good energy, to give thanks to our past generations, our um, elders that taught us these sacred ways, and to think about the future generations to come. You know, with that in mind, and, and I do want to share this in case we're going to run out of time, but I recently, um, have written a book and it's a children's book and it's called The Spirit of Chicano Park, El Espíritu del Parque Chicano. It's a bilingual children's book and it talks about the history and the founding of the park. Um, it's historical fiction. Um, and in the um, back pages of the book, I've conducted several interviews. So we have a timeline of what happened to Barrio Logan and how Chicano Park came about. We have uh, Tommy Camarillo, Chicano Park um, Steering Committee Chairperson, Josie Talamantes, another really important figure in helping us um, become part of a national movement. Um, we have artists, including Guillermo Aranda, um, Victor Ochoa, um, let's see who else. I have um, of course, Mario Aguilar is interviewed as a danzante. 
Patricia Aguayo as another artista. Um, we have the Enrique family, including Isabel Enrique, and of course, Chunky Sanchez is showcased um, because of his wonderful music that he contributed. All of these different movements, including the lowriders, so we have Rigo Reyes, um, and let's see, well, I think that's about it, that are focused on the back of the book to talk about how Chicano Park has inspired these movements, and at the same time, these movements have inspired Chicano Park to continue to strengthen. And, and to me, it's really important that kids know about what Chicano Park represents, who are some of the founding members that really built this movement, and, and not just San Diego, but we have had an impact on the nation in terms of the murals, in terms of the arts, and just in terms of the, um, the uh, social justice movement that has come out of the building of Chicano Park. So all of the proceeds that are earned from this book will be donated back to the Chicano Park Steering Committee and to the Chicano Park Museum, because this book is about celebrating our cultura but also building for the future. Well, that's so wonderful. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. We were talking about that a little earlier before we started the podcast. And this children's book is something so important, that, as you mentioned, and not only nationally, but internationally, because as you said, your group, your group has gone to Mexico and, and, and the Danzantes have gone to uh, not just this region, but to other countries. And it's so important that we educate our youth. So I'm so glad that you're doing this book um, and that you're gonna be donating money to the Chicano Park Steering Committee and to the Museum and Cultural Center. How can people find out about this book? How, is there, do you, do they, once, it's, once it's out, how can they get a copy, find out about it, support it? Do you have a website? I do have a website and um... I haven't quite flipped the switch to publish it, but it is uh, toltecapress.com, T-O-L-T-E-C-A press.com, toltecapress.com. And if you go there in about a week, you should be able to find out more information about the book um, and contact me if you would like to purchase one. We can do it by mail order. I had hoped to have a big, um, you know, kind of book release at our channel parks to, Park Day celebration, but of course we weren't able to have that this year at this time, but maybe we will. We still don't know what the future will hold. That's right. And uh, yeah, so totecapress.com. How about if they want to find out about the dancing, about the, uh, the, 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 the Aztec dancing, where can they go to find out more about your group and what does it mean? What does the, the name of your group mean? Mexicayo, danza Mexicayo. Mexicayo is a, a Nahuatl word that basically means um, coming from the Mexican nation or of the Mexican nation. So basically we're a danza from the Mexican nation. And uh, mm -hmm. you can go to mexicayo.org, M-E-X-I-C-A-Y-O-T-L.org. And you can find out more information about our dance group, about our dance tradition. Um, I think one of the things that sets us apart, it doesn't, it doesn't make us better, but it makes us different, as you said, Enrique. Um, my husband is um, quite the educator, but many of the people in our group are either educators, um, social justice workers, uh, people who are always contributing to society on many levels. And so much about what we do is about educating. It's not so much about the performing, although people like to see that and we love to share our dances, but it's about teaching um, about some of the values and belief systems of our antepasados and how some of those um, teachings really we, we need to hold on to them because it's what will get us through um, many of these tumultuous times that we're facing. Absolutely. And I've seen you not only when you do your performances, but when you're practicing and so forth. And what's the age range? I see you from little, from the little tiny children to to elders. What's the age range of your, of, of your group? 
Well, I think our, our youngest dancer is probably about um, two months old. Um, and you might <laughs> laugh at that, but you know, that person was dancing with their mother in the womb. And uh, well, that's true. Will continue to be uh, a member of the group. And then um, probably my husband and I are the oldest, and we're both 65. And so we, uh, we love that that's what the danza does. That teaches everyone to have a, a, a role, an important, significant role in, in what we do. Our children are our future. And so we love to showcase the children and let them know that what they have to say, what they share with us is, is just as valid as what anyone in the circle has to share with us. So um, all ages are welcome, um, all capabilities. Um, we've had people with delayed learning disabilities that learn to drum, people that um, have you know, different kinds of uh, different, just differences. Everyone's accepted. It's not our place to determine you know, who should be a part of the circle. Um, we just say whoever's called to the circle, if you come in a good way, we more than more than welcome you. It's such a beautiful spirit and, and the work that you're doing. We're definitely going to have to have you back, Beatrice, because there's so many more questions that I'm sure I know that I and, and the listeners have, you know, about the drumming and, and so on and so forth. So we'd love to have you back. And it's so generous that you're going to be donating the proceeds from the book to the Chicano Park Steering Committee and to the Museum and Cultural Center. And uh, it's, it's uh, just an honor to have you with us today. Please give my love to uh, Mario and, and to the, the dancers. And the last question that I often like to ask our guest is, to you, what is love? To you, Beatrice, what is, what is love? Mm. <laughs> That's lovely. Well, love is natural. I mean, I think that we're all um, these spiritual beings that, um, you know, love is probably the most natural component of who you are. And so the way that I demonstrate love is um, cooking uh, for my family, sharing the danza with my community, um, being kind to others, listening, um, and understanding that, you know, it's really okay to have different opinions and different belief systems, uh, but the bottom line is to do no harm to others and to um, love our mother. And our mother is the earth. And our mother is a biological and physical mother that lives on this earth. Um, it's for Catholics, it's the Virgin de Guadalupe or the Virgin Mary. Um, we all have different ways of, of defining mother, but we all come from the mother earth. So loving and cherishing the earth, taking care of the earth and the environment, to me is a really uh, important aspect of love. Well said, that's beautiful. So Beatriz, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Once again, Beatriz Zamora Aguilar, and uh, she's going to be soon, we'll have that children's book out there. So we'll make sure we post that so people know where they can purchase it and also to learn more about the dancing. Thank you very much for joining us today. You're definitely an example of the fact that love is an action, not just a word. So muchísimas gracias. Que Dios te bendiga. Y, y adelante, adelante con Chicano Park. Y viva Chicano Park. Y viva Chicano Park. Thank you, Enrique. Hasta luego. Adiós. Muchas gracias. Wow. Another uh, wonderful, magnificent mujer. Beatriz Zamora, what an inspirational person you are. And we want to recommend to everybody to please purchase this book. You can get it at Barnes & Noble, you can get it on Amazon, or you can go, what I like to do, go to Toteca Press, toltecapress.com, and you can get the book there. And uh, not only the story and, and what uh, B wrote there, which was fantastic, but it was illustrated by Mayra Nessa, and she did a wonderful job with the illustrations. And I know the children and the adults will really enjoy it. So I strongly recommend you get the book. You stay tuned to Magnificent Mujer. I want to thank Sarah Bella, our producer. Enrique Morón is your host. Muchas gracias. And please remember, amor, si se puede. <laughs>